Shamai, Lieto, and my Nori Sankayak Vaur. Hello, Lee again, you're at Sankayak Vaur Manor House. Now, this is part two of our video where we are demonstrating how we prepare the reproduction books that we have on display around the Manor House. Now, previously, we had sewn the book, we had cut the boards, we attached them, we glued them and set them and placed them into this finishing press. Now, this has been sat here for about 48 hours now, so the glue will be very nicely set. So, without further ado, let's get on with creating this beautiful calf leather bound book. So first off, let's get it out of the press and we can take a look. That's not looking too bad at all. Spine has dried very nicely. Boards are fully intact. And it does look like the glue is taken on the inside. So, yep, yeah, we are most certainly ready to come on to the next process, which will involve cutting out the leather to the correct size and preparing the edges, which is probably the fiddliest job of the whole lot. So, let's take a look. Now this is the piece of leather that we're going to use. This is a, a beautifully prepared chocolate coloured piece of calf skin. It's, uh, it's already at about, I think it's only about 0.6 of a millimetre thick. So we're going to mark it out. Now to save a bit of time, I've already marked it out and it's simply done. You just place the book on the leather with enough overlap so that you can fold it into the boards which we'll see a bit later move the book over mark it out on the other side again the same amount of overlap and then we'll cut it out there we go that is now ready for the next part of the process now before we actually cover the boards in leather we have to pair the edges of the leather now, what that means simply is, when we put the book, when we put the leather on the book, as the leather is brought around, it has to fold over the edges and get stuff down. But even leather as thin as this is a little bit too thick for that job. So what we do is we pair it. Now, there are specific pairing knives, but I learned to do it with an old plain blade. Um, so that's what I continue to use to this day. And all pairing is simply is that you take a little of the thickness off the back of the leather. And to do that, you just simply slice away until you've achieved that you want. Now that is considerably thinner than it was. That's probably less than half a millimeter there now. And that will make it much easier to fold and glue the leather. So now our leather is fully paired all around the edges. It's made nice and thin so we can now start to glue up. Now this is where a matter of preference comes in. Some people they like to glue the surface of the book itself. Personally, I prefer to glue the leather. Um, there's still enough soft matter on the back of this piece of leather to be very absorbent. So if you're gluing the leather, I find that you can gauge better exactly how much you need. So again, a good, a good amount of PVA glue. Spread that all around your piece of leather. Yeah, now that's quite generously coated. So, all we need to do is take our block, place it central on the glued leather, 
just a quick check either side. Slight adjustment. And then we are ready. I think pretty much to make that permanent fix. So we lay the book there that way. Take a piece of our grease proof paper. Set that on that side. Fold that in so it's held. And then for this side, to get some to get some tension on it so we've got definition along the spine, what I tend to do is open the book up, push the edge of the board into the leather. And then as you close it, it tensions along the spine. And that now needs to go into a press. However, as time is of the essence, I'm gonna carry on gluing the book. Now, as I say, usually this would go into a press for uh, probably at least two hours, but um, no need to do that. It's only a small book. We can do all the gluing right now, and then we can put it into the press and allow it to dry until it, into its finished state a bit later on. Now I've just placed a little bit of extra glue um, around the outside edge of the board, just to give it that little extra bit of adhesion. And then we can start folding in the leather. Now this is where one of the most important tools of the bookbinders kit comes into play. This. This is your, your bone edge or spatula. They've got very many, many names. Um, for a bookbinder, it's essentially an extension of your right hand or your left hand if you're left-handed. And these are used for making sure that everything gets pressed in, that full contact is made. And when it comes to the edges, uh, what you need to do is you push down and work that right into the edge of the board then a little extra glue and then that gets folded right in so the leather gets worked in all around the corners of the book, pushing as we go to make sure that it pulls in tight to the edge. And then this piece at the top is pushed down behind the signatures. And then again, pushed down into place. And that is our top edge and sides done. I now finish off by doing the top and essentially then we'll be on to the home run. And with that done, we now have something that is approaching a nice leather bound book, but there is still work to do. What we need to do now is place a front end piece here, because uh, you went open the book, you don't want to be looking at the, the flattened down cords and a piece here in the back. In fact, now is a good and actually last opportunity to be able to see these binding cords. In the previous video, remember I showed you when we threaded them through the boards, that we laid them down into some glue and then we combed them out so that they're flat. Well, uh, these are now perfectly flat. And so that when the book is closed, because I also said that these this will spend, as, as any book will, spend most of its life on a shelf, 
when it's between other books and they're pushing against it, when you open it up, you won't get troughs pushed into the book. So it keeps it in good order. So we'll get these end papers stuck in. So I've placed a good spiral of glue on the rear board. So now we can just work it out to cover the entire face. So with that placed, so that, that glue placed there, all we need to do now is close the book. Make sure we close it perfectly. And then that rear page can be worked down into the corners so that we don't have any air bubbles in there. That's the last thing we want is air bubbles all the way around. There we go. And even now the glue is already dry and you can feel that it's easily peeling off. So there'll be no unsightly excess glue. Now for the next bit, obviously we don't want to stick this piece to the front board because this is our frontis, this is our title. So remember right at the beginning, we had this. This was the identifier page that was inside the modern binding of the reproduction print block that came from the manufacturers. It's thicker. This is uh, this is quite heavy grade paper. It's quite a heavy gauge. Not as heavy as this. So this will make a really nice covering piece for the front. So we're just going to glue that board up, and then we'll lay that in place. So that's the frontis put in place. Now we have a wooden roller, we'll give it a finer roll, make sure that there's absolutely no contamination on your lining paper underneath because you're gonna put some pressure on this and we don't want to put indentations into the leather. And we can give this a good roll, make sure every single part of both surfaces are now touching and that they've bonded. And essentially, the book is finished, but there is still one final process. It needs to go into a heavy press for about an hour, just to make sure that everything's in place, everything's bound in. Now, usually I would use our big cast iron book press. But as this is such a small volume, there's, there's no real need. I'm gonna put this into the, the laying press, um, We'll put it in there for an hour and we'll come back and take a look. Now, with our book placed into the finishing press, hopefully for the final time, um, it'll sit there now until all the glue is dried. We can give some attention to the spine. Now, I said in the previous video that the, the binding cords that we sewed onto the print block, when we cut them off, we left an overhang to attach the boards. But they also provide another function, and it's purely an aesthetic function. Now this is, this is a copy, or a reproduction copy, of Gerard's Herbal, which is completely contemporary to 1645. We're fortunate that they print these as um, a facsimile of one of the very early editions. And so I stripped that book down and rebound it. And this one gives a very nice example of the raised bands, which look very good on a shelf. Uh, in fact, when book binding progressed um, into the early 18th century, and they developed a process of um, recessing the bands into the spine so that you have a flat spine, they were unpopular. People didn't like them. And so they would bind them with the recessed cords, but then they would put false cords on them. Purely aesthetic, they provided no other function, but this is not only good to look at, it's actually functional. It's holding the book very nicely together. So we need to accentuate the binding cords on this book. And for this, we use these tools. 
very specific book binding tools. And we just simply work our way into the spine. We work the leather either side and we just accentuate the cords all the way along until we come to the end. And there's one more tool that can help us with this job. Which is this. And it's a tool specifically for crimping the raised bands. So it accentuates them even further. That's how important it was to people that the bands could be seen. They were even specific tools in the bookbinders kit to make sure those raised bands were as visible as possible. Now, we'll allow that to lie in the press for an hour and then hopefully we will have a fully finished calf leather bound book. So our book has now been in the press for just over an hour and a half. So all that glue that we put in place that should now have set so we can see now our finished volume or should I say our almost finished volume they're all nicely bound see it's got a nice frontis there so it disguises all the, the flattened out cords underneath the rear of the book all nicely laid in and the binding cords, the raised bands looking good on the end. It opens nicely, it lays nicely, everything's even. Essentially, as far as we're concerned, this book is finished, but we could, uh, we could embellish it a little if we wanted. Um, if you were wealthy again and you wanted to show that wealth, if you'd had a book bound in the very finest calf, then you might have it gold embossed. And for that, you have the tools such as this. Um, these embossing tools will be placed uh, on um, a hot surface, um, often very, very near to a flame uh, until they become just hot enough so that if you lick your finger, you can hold it there for just about a second or two. You then take your book and you would wipe um, onto the surface of it something called glare. Now glare is a mixture of shellac that's been dissolved in alcohol. And you'd wipe that onto the surface. Then you would take your piece of gold leaf and you'd lay the gold leaf onto it. And then when your tool was hot, you could then, using a good amount of pressure, emboss that design into the cover the glare would very temporarily liquefy underneath it would then bond to the gold and then when you remove the tool and it's cooled you could just brush the excess gold leaf away and you'd be left with a beautiful design you could have uh, borders put on the books people often had borders put on the inside leather of a book and if the book was wide enough you could even have um, like a small cartouche with the title of the book embossed into it. But for our purposes, this book is essentially finished. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, our finished book. Another one to put on the shelf amongst the small library that we've already got. I hope we give you some idea as to the, the work that goes in to what we do behind the scenes to make sure that we can present the most historically accurate vision of the house that we possibly can. Um, it, just in case you were wondering, this is actually a facsimile of um, a book that was released in 1605 uh, titled A True Relation of the Most Prosperous Voyage Made This Present Year 1605 by Captain George Weymouth in the Discovery of the Land of Virginia. I should imagine that would have been an exceptionally exciting book 
to read at the beginning of the 17th century. So this will go on the shelf amongst the others, which are very, very different in size. Some of them, we have small books like this. This is a small notebook, might very well have been carried by uh, the agent uh, and surveyor. Um, might have been carried by the cook. He might have scribbled down his recipes in it. We have things like this, very tall, thin books, ledgers that uh, would have been used for um, keeping track of, of rent paid, rent owed, um, all sorts of money to and from the house, and even great tomes like this. Again, this might very well, a book like this would have been used perhaps for um, keeping track of money to and from the house, payment of wages to servants, that sort of thing. So if you could display these books in your house, then you would have been proven to the world that you were a wealthy person indeed. So I hope you did enjoy uh, these, these two videos, parts one and two. If you did, please do leave uh, a comment on whichever platform you find this video. We always do like to read your comments. And uh, we hope that you'll look at the other videos that we've produced and we'll stick around and look at a few more that we produce in the future. So, thank you for watching. Until next time, hoi